In modern times, Serbian football has been dominated by two teams that have won the league on every single occasion except from one and that team doesn't exist anymore. And those two teams are Red Star and Partizan. Today we change that whole landscape as we take over Cikorički to create a Serbian Big 3. And I'm sure you're thinking, why that team in particular, Steve? Well, this poor side have been the third place team in the league for the last four seasons. And what makes this one extra special is that we will only be signing players who are of Serbian nationality or at the very least have Serbian as a second nationality to the team. We won't be signing anybody else. So guys, here we are ready to kick things off in Serbia. Now, I'm sure you've seen we've got the Red Star shirt. Where is it there? I need to look at my other monitor. It's just there. That Red Star shirt is there from a save I did two years ago. Well, we are here back in Serbia again, and it's time for a good little save. This team have won the Serbian Cup once, as you can see here. They won it in 2015, um, but they are a very good team. You can see over the last couple of seasons, they've been doing very, very well. If we go and check out the Super League stats and the past winners, you can see they've been the third place team quite a lot, but they've not actually been a runner up. There were a couple of different teams that we could have gone for with this. We, I was toying with the idea of Voj, uh, Vojvodina as well. Went for this team um, because I think it's uh, an interesting one and they have some good players already. So I'm thinking we're going to get them over the hump. They're not going to be the third place team anymore. We're going to get them to the top of the league. Obviously, the league has a little bit of a stranglehold at the moment by Red Star. Um, as you kind of would expect, they are probably the best team, biggest and best team in Serbia right now sure that's going to offend some partisan fans but this team we have three competitions this year we have the league we have the serbian cup and we do enter into the europa league but we have to qualify to be in there so i think it might be a stretch this season but we're gonna have to see if we go and take a look at the team you can see we have lots of players with really really high potential but they are quite young we do have a smattering of non-serbs you can see a bosnian there a gambian um, Montenegro and Senegalese international, I believe, and Dai is. Oh no, he's never played for Senegal, never mind. Um, but you can see there's a smattering of other nations. By the end of this save, that will all say Serbia. That is the goal, or one of the goals with this team. We also want to take them to the top of Serbian football, and we need a good tactic to do that. So we will be using GYR's recently released Batman tactic. It's a 4-3-3, and these are the two players that we're going to pin in two positions. Uh, Stankovic is 20 years of age. He's a Serbian uh, youth international aged uh, in the under-21s. Uh, he looks like a very good well-rounded midfielder for us to go into one of those spots. Uh, he is going to be a defensive midfielder for us. Then we've got this guy as well. Uh, Miladinovic is how I'm going to probably butcher this guy's name. If you're here for Serbian pronunciations, you're in the wrong spot, guys. Um, he's going to be our attacking mid or sort of kind of CM on attack in this particular one because he can actually do things in the opposition box. He's 20 years of age as well. So you're going to see lots of these young Serbian players come through. We're going to give them an opportunity and we're going to see how we can get on. Obviously, if we go back to the competitions tab and take a look at the league, which is going to be the bread and butter, a majority of the Media Dream 11 is all from uh, Red Star or Partizan, except from this man who plays for our team, Marko Docic is how I'm going to say his name. And we are the third place team or the predicted to be the third place team in the league this season. Season one, as I always say with these rebuilds, we keep the transfers as they are. We block the first transfer window and we go and have a free hit at the, se at the season, at the league, and we just see how we get on. So let's roll it for season one, see how we do. Kicking things off, we're going to start with our continental run because that was over in a flash. We were drawn alongside Greek team Olympiakos in the playoff round and in the first leg at home, despite taking the lead, we conceded two second half goals to give us an uphill task on the road. In Greece, things went from bad to worse for us, suffering a 5-3 loss on the night with our goalkeeper conceding every single shot on target that our opposition had. For me, this goes to show the amount of work that we're probably going to have to do with this team. But the silver lining is, granted, we didn't make it into the Europa League, but we do drop down into the Europa Conference League for the season. We were drawn in Group A in that competition alongside FC Twente, Asana and Karabag, and we were very successful, winning five of our six fixtures to top the group and move straight into the round of 16. And this is where we came up against the familiar foe, in FC Twente. I didn't think this was possible that we could play a group stage opponent at this stage of European competition, but I guess I'm wrong. Much the same as our group stage fixtures, we suffered defeat on the road in Holland thanks to two late goals from the opposition, but we know that traveling to Serbia is no easy task. 
Back at home, it took us a while to find our feet, but we did settle down in the second half and open up a nice two-goal lead to regain that lead in the tie overall. However, with five minutes of the game remaining, Ricky Van Wolfswinkel scored a massive goal for the visitors to send the game into extra time. So we needed someone to step up and enter Marco Dottic. He received the ball on the edge of the area before whipping a beautiful effort beyond the goalkeeper to give us the lead again, which we were able to hold on to and move into the quarterfinals. Here we faced Israeli side Maccabi Tel Aviv and this time we'd be at home in the first leg. We set the tone in this one with Ibrahima and Dais netting a goal in each half before the visitors were handed a lifeline with a single goal in the 84th minute. In the away leg, Tel Aviv came to play and added two goals in the second half to take the lead in the tie with time running out. But the game moved into injury time and we continue to show some fight by lashing a shot from the edge of the box into the back of the net so that we face extra time for a second round in a row. However, sadly for us, this time we couldn't come out on top on the winning end as it was the Israeli side who scored the decisive goal to see our European adventure come to an end this season. But back on home soil, we were much more successful. We started our league campaign with a five-game unbeaten run that included a 1-0 victory at home against Partizan. Our fantastic start was abruptly brought to a halt with a loss on the road to Voivodina, but we did manage to get things back on track quickly after. Ibrahima Ndai was our top man this season, providing 25 goals along with 15 assists from the wing, but he seems like he will be leaving the club for a second time as he wants to explore his options at the end of his current deal. After the winter break, we suffered our second defeat of the season to Voivodina, but we did manage to score a huge 3-0 win at home against Red Star just a few game weeks later. Following the split of the league, we moved into the final phase where for the most part, we were impressive, brushing some of the league's top sides aside, but suffering defeat on the final day of the season. We concluded the season with 83 points, just one point behind eventual champions Red Star, so that loss on the final day of the season was incredibly costly. But that does mean that we will enter the Champions League qualification next season. Serbia also has a domestic cup on offer, and in this season we progress all the way through to the final, whilst avoiding all of the league's big hitters. In the final, we came up against TSC in a bit of a battle of the best of the rest. We opened the scoring in this one with a nice flowing passing move, before a calm finish curled around the goalkeeper. However, that only seemed to spark TSC into action and they responded with a goal in each half to put us quickly on the back foot. As we were pushing to get back into the game, we made things even harder for ourselves as Victor Logan received his second yellow card of the game to see us reduced to 10 men. But even with 10 men, we were able to pull level with just four minutes of the game to go. So we were all square to close the game out and then through extra time as well, meaning the game would be settled via penalty shootout. TSC opened the scoring, then eight seasons and veteran Marco Dotic saw his first penalty saved. Both teams then converted out the remainder of their penalties, but we disappointingly lost that shootout. This was a fantastic foundation season, and I'm really hoping to use it as a springboard moving forward throughout this rebuild. As we have Champions League qualification to deal with next season, we have a transfer budget of four and a half million, and now it is time to go shopping for some of those best Serbians available. So guys, transfer update for season two, and we've been pretty active in this transfer window. On the right-hand side of the screen, you can see we've sold two players here for 1.3 million each. Uh, one to Bosham over in Germany. He has gone one of our strikers. He's, he's he's quite good. He is quite good, but he has gone for 1.3 million. When that sort of money gets offered to you, especially for a non-Serb in this particular rebuild, we have to move them on. Jovanovic has also gone to Shanghai Port as well for the same money, 28 years of age center half was a good player for us last season uh but again much the same once you see that money coming in we're trying to invest in serbian youth here uh and that is exactly what we've done in this transfer window lots of business was done by the uh by the club already as you can see some of the moves there um but the highlighted ones at the bottom of the screen are the ones that we've made we've brought in a guy from Vojvodina. um as you can see he has serbian as a second nationality um but uh yeah he comes into play on both wings he's a natural on both sides which you absolutely love to see and then the next player was for 325k he is a striker probably gonna be a starter maybe backup maybe not really sure on who's gonna take that mantle up front just yet the next player 16k again squad player 17 years of age we're not breaking the bank on some of these guys but we're just trying to hoover up some of the best available talent when we see it we also pay 1.3 million pounds for this guy um Mitchell 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 
Mitala shit. Oh my god, I'm gonna butcher these names. He is good. He is again good. He's a natural on the right hand side, can play on the left hand side, can also play up front if we absolutely need to. 21 years of age, coming in from Red Star, so you know their use system is pretty darn good. Then there's three on this page. Uh, Andrej is another player who I'm, I'm just gonna go with their first name. Andrej Petrovic, again, a nice squad player for us. 18 years of age, capped at under 18 level for Serbia. He came in from Red Star as well for 750k. Then the next one, we have a new goal. Goalkeeper Zrelko Samkovic is how I'm going to say him. Uh, he looks quite good, actually, for the level. I think he could be a very good goal uh, goalkeeper for us moving forward. And then finally, we've got this man here, Stefan Lekovic. Looks like a very good centre half. Has been at Villarreal. Former Red Star player, of course. Six foot four, 14 positioning is very good. 15 jumping reach, 15 heading. I think he can be a very good athletic defender for us. If we go into the tactic, though, this is kind of the core of the team that I'm working with right now. Um, and I, this is the man I have to talk to you about. Uh, Svetkovic. He looks very good. Not 17 years of age. One cap and one goal for the Serbian under 21. But he's 17. He looks supremely well-rounded. Yes, I'd like a little bit more in terms of his first touch. But I'm hoping I can build my attack around this man. And this is why I said that that other player was probably going to be a squad player because of this man's emergence. But I'm looking forward to seeing how he gets on. We played him a decent amount last season. If I go and show you. Played him a decent amount last season. Got 31 appearances in the league. Got 16 goals as well at 16. So now is the time for him him to step up but he has all of the attributes that we're looking for because we're playing him as an advanced forward he's got double digits for everything at 17 so it's going to be interesting to see how he gets on but you can see where some of the signings have come in these two wide players are brand new signings for us this season so we have some really good like a really good spine of the team in what we are trying to do here if i quick pick without restriction the unpicked positions you can see Dosic comes in there as well and we're pretty solid we're kind of maybe lacking at center half a little bit but i think we can do good things this season obviously we do have the champions league this year having finished is runners up in the league uh we don't go automatically into the champions league we have to qualify and in a, the second qualifying round we will face Trabonspor from turkey so that's going to be an interesting one we do have the serbian cup where hopefully i can return to the final again and maybe this season be a bit more successful and in the league you can see if we go into the season preview uh red star still the odds on favorites one to three for them to win the league we are still 20 to one so we're quite a ways away uh from being there uh, most of the team now uh, or the media dream 11 at least is at the red star team but i'd like to think that we could at least achieve second again i don't know how long it's going to take us to overtake red star in this save but fingers crossed we can have a good campaign and let's see if we can get into the champions league that 12 million quid for actually making the league phase would be ginormous for this challenge This was a remarkable season for a team that opened up our campaign with a 4-1 loss in the league. We were mightily impressive in the league, settling into a real rhythm that even handed last season's champions a 4-2 defeat at their own stadium, which was a huge statement of intent. Our key man this season was now 18-year-old striker Svetkovic, who was thrust into the limelight and handled it like a true professional. The youngster scored 24 goals and got 7 assists in all compositions and is now wanted by Ferenc Verosh. Don't worry, I don't intend on letting him go anywhere. Nikola Matulik was the most impressive of our summer signings on the right wing, securing 22 goals along with 15 assists, which is a huge return in a debut season. After the winter break in Serbia, we went from strength to strength, winning every single game until the league split in April. Once in the final phase, we only dropped four points, but picked up huge results like a 5-0 demolition of Partizan at home. It will be no surprise that with those results, we broke the eight-season stranglehold of Red Star on the Serbian league, winning the club's first league title ever. It was relatively routine towards the end, edging out Partizan by 9 points, with Red Star down in 3rd. But the domestic dominance did not stop there. We blasted our way through to the Serbian Cup semi-finals, where this season we take on Red Star. We were at home for this one, but it didn't stop Red Star taking the lead in the game in the ninth minute. However, that goal seemed to kick us into gear, and we responded with three first-half goals of our own to take a 3-1 lead into the break. Red Star offered little to nothing in the second half, so we added a fourth goal for good measure and advanced into the final, where we take on Partizan. We started this one brilliantly, racing out to a 2-0 lead inside the first 25 
five minutes. But Partizan showed more fight than Red Star did in the previous round and responded with a goal in each half to make it 2-2 and take the game to extra time. Neither side really wanted to go for it and in the extra 30 minutes we were awarded a penalty which sadly for us Marco Dotic saw saved. So we went into penalties and the partisan goalkeeper was feeling himself after the last penalty that he saved just before we got to the shootout. But it was the outfield players of Partizan that blinked first as two of their players blasted their penalty straight down the middle, which our goalkeeper was stood there and saved to see us win the shootout 5-4 and complete a domestic double. Belgrade, we are your captain now. I'm the captain now. Unfortunately, we couldn't transition that domestic dominance onto the European stage. In the Champions League, we progressed past Turkish side Trabzonspor with a 4-2 aggregate win in the second qualifying round, but were then handed a tough tie against Benfica in the third round. Despite being reduced to 10 men early in the first leg, we achieved a respectable 2-2 draw at home, but as you'd expect in Portugal, we suffered a 2-0 defeat with David Neres bagging a brace. So we dropped down into the Europa League and we were pretty impressive in that league phase this season, winning half of our games, but it felt like we were really close in the games that we did lose, mostly losing by a single goal. We finished 16th in the table, meaning we would have a playoff fixture, but just being in the knockout stages of a European competition feels like good progress. It would be Napoli in the playoff, and I was scared, as they still have Victor Osimhen and Kovaric Skelia in their ranks. And the first leg was in Naples, and we got smoked. Napoli opened the scoring, but we were able to cancel it out with our only shot on target of the game, but then the Italian side showed their class, scoring three goals without reply to take a commanding lead into the second leg. We went for it a little bit more at home, but couldn't make the breakthrough, with Napoli winning 1-0 on the night and 5-1 on aggregate. But this season was huge progress, winning the league for the first time in the club's history and securing its second Serbian Cup ever. But now I want more success in Europe. As champions, we have a transfer budget of just over £3 million, so let's get to work this summer. So guys, transfer update for season number three, and we've made a big, big sale this summer. On here, you can see we sold a player, uh, Stefan Lekovic. He has gone to uh, Saudi Arabia for £5 million. Now, he's not been at the club for very long. We paid £4 million quid for him, uh, and he's already departed for £5 million, quid, making an extra million pounds on him. It's very difficult when some of these players want to come in and then ultimately get attracted by some of these Saudi clubs because we cannot afford to pay £20,000 a week for this player. So we only made a million pounds on him. He looks very good still, so I wish him luck over in Saudi. Uh, but obviously, we use that money to make some investments of our own. There's some players I'm going to highlight here. We've kind of raided Partizan this summer. Uh, Nikola Simic is another player who I've seen before. He comes in to replace that centre-back that we have just sold. Um, he looks quite good from Partizan, £2.5 million. Uh, Bogdan, again, another winger that can... Be a bit tricky for us on that right-hand side. I think he can do a little bit of damage. Again, another Serbian under-21 international. But you can see, just as a comparison, we're paying this man £425 a week. So we really can't compete with these £20,000 a week uh, wages that some of these clubs are offering. Um, another player coming in, this one from Red Star, another Serbian under-21 international. I'll show you the Serbian under-21s in a sec because I, I reckon it's going to be all of our team, which is quite hilarious. Again, another centre-back option for us. Again, looks pretty well-rounded, five-star potential ability. It's kind of what you're paying for at this uh, at this level. £2.3 million pounds on this lad, another centre-half again, Nikola Milicic. He's probably the best one of the lot. 16 jump and reach on him as well as being six foot two. Um, probably the best one that we have picked up. He will come straight into our starting 11, no doubt. Um, and again, looks pretty well rounded um, and then the last one on this page is Milan Elisic another striker he's probably going to be a backup for us this season the former partisan man he's very good actually um I've used him before in uh, in previous rebuilds, and he is very, very good. But I think we're probably going to prioritize our own man up top, I think. Uh, and then the final two on this page, uh, Jankovic is, again, another youth player, under-19 uh, international for Serbia in central midfield. Not necessarily the best one that you could pick up, but, again, another body for us in midfield. The depth 
element of this is kind of key because you need to go out and hoover up as many of these young Serbian talents as we possibly can. Going into the season though, we are quite young. As you can see, there's quite a lot of under-21s in our main team already. Simic at the back. We've got the other centre-back, Milicic. He's there. The left-back is also under-21. We've also got uh, our strikers, of course, under-21. He looks pretty good now. Um, again, well-rounded. Getting that first touch up to 11 is quite nice for, uh, for us as well. I said I'd show you the Serbian. Yeah, you can see, obviously, the grayed-out ones. So, like, we've got one, two, three, four, five... <laughs> We got six players in the Serbian under-21s team. And obviously, you can see we're scouting some of the others. And then in the Serbian under-19s, we've got a couple as well. So you can kind of see what we're trying to do here. Just really trying to, like, pick up as many players as we possibly can to have as many players in the Serbian national team as possible come the end of this. Uh, we haven't got anyone in there just yet, but we will hopefully get someone in there at some point. Uh, but yeah, you can see why we're hoarding some of these types of players. But the team's looking pretty good. we still got lots of talent. The actual firepower that we have in that final third is really, really nice. And I think we can do some damage yet again. We need to try and prove that last season's league win wasn't a fluke. So if we go into the competitions tab, we have the Champions League. And we enter in the Champions playoff, meaning we've got to beat one team. We don't know who that is yet. We've got to beat one team and we're in the Champions League proper. Again, that sort of finance level would be absolutely huge. Obviously, it's not as big of an impact to you guys who play in England. But when you play in leagues like Serbia, the 12 million quid for the Champions League is huge um obviously if we go and take a look at the league if we go and take a look at the season preview red star are still the odds on favorites to win the league uh and then partisan and then us but our odds are definitely definitely getting shorter now so hopefully we can go out there and prove that last season wasn't a fluke and we can retain the serbian league title This season, as I said, I really wanted to get into the Champions League and we had one team to beat to do it. Win and you get a massive, massive payday. And that team was Ferenc Beros from Hungary. And unfortunately, we lost the first game on the road thanks to a goal from Danny Ings. Yeah, you heard that right. Danny Ings. I've got no idea what he's doing here either. <laughs> However, back in Serbia, we were really able to assert ourselves, scoring twice in the first half to see us go into the halftime break all square on aggregate. We started the second half superbly with two goals in quick succession. Ferenc Ferosh did have a second goal of their own late on, but we secured our path into the Champions League for the first time ever ever. But as expected, this didn't go exactly as we planned as we only picked up three points in the league phase with three draws, even if one of those was against PSG at home. We finished 33rd in the league table, but we will be back at this stage at some point in this save, I'm sure of it. Back on home soil, it was business as usual, picking up several impressive wins to open our campaign, with us only suffering two losses in the first half of the season. It was summer signing Nemanja Trifunovic, who was our standout performer this season after his £1.8 million transfer from Partizan. The wine man contributed 21 goals alongside 15 assists in all competitions, and is now wanted by German side FC Cologne. After the winter break, we were virtually unstoppable, only dropping 9 points from our remaining 17 games to retain our Serbian league title, proving that last season was not a fluke. And our defence of the Serbian Cup got off to a flyer, scoring 11 goals in the first two games before dispatching Partizan in the quarterfinals. We faced a lower league opposition in the semi-finals and swept them aside comfortably to set up a third final appearance in a row, and this season we take on IMT. This was another side from the second division and they put up a great fight in this one after we scored twice in the first half to take command of the game. IMT did show great character to battle back and make it 2-2, forcing the game into extra time. But this is where our extra quality really shone through as Niksa Delebasic scored his second goal of the game at the near post to see us lift back-to-back -back Serbian Cups. This was yet another huge season and the Champions League money should help us go from strength to strength. And that wad of cash has landed in our account and we can now have a massive transfer budget of just over £13 million and our wage budget has jumped from £30,000 a week to £100,000 a week. Oh, and the board are really pressing forward as they've announced plans to build a new stadium in Belgrade. So let's see how that one progresses. Right, so we have our transfer update for season number four. And you can see we've got to work early here, making some signings on the 15th of June. And you can see they all arrived 
on the same day. Um, Lazar Svla has come in. He's a new gen, as you can see. Looks high aggression. 19 aggression on this winger. But looks like he could have something about him. Only 8 dribbling is something that we can work on. As you can see, we've offered him out on loan. He's come through the Voivodina you set up. 1.5 million pounds is what we can pay for him. And then the next up is Patrick Varga. Again, another new gen. As I said, we're just going to start hoovering these guys up. All the ones with high potential. He came in for 400k. 575k for this man. He's more of a central attacking midfielder, but I think we can convert him back down to being a central midfielder on attack. Martin Yanko. Again, this whole page is kind of like potential, guys. Uh, another guy, uh, Rennie Sestak, Sestak has come in as a left back from uh, Red Star. Now, if you watch my say with, uh, with, uh, with Red Star, you'll know that Serbian fullbacks do not come through at all. So you have to take your chances on this guy. He is five foot five. I think he could be a very good player for us in the future. Josic is another one who's come in, another wing player for us. 16 agility along with 14 pace and 13 acceleration make him an absolute handful. And then Mark Major comes in from TSC. Again, another Serbian fullback. You can't say no to them. He can't really do a lot yet, but he can stand in the right position, goddammit. And that's what I'm here for. High stamina, high bravery on him as well. Looks like a very good player or could become a very good player. The guys on this side of, uh, of the coin, guys, we've only spent 5 million on this page and then what's that probably six seven eight nine ten just over 11 million on that page so 16 and a half 17 million let's call it 17 and a half million to be safe jovan babich is another one he's a youth player well he's not going to get a lot of time but again you need to keep uh, picking these guys up this guy is coming from partisan though i'm not even going to try and butcher his name uh but he looks like a very good well-rounded player to come straight into our midfield 17 vision on him 16 natural fitness again pretty well-rounded for this level Still has five-star potential. He's six foot four. He's 20 years of age. This is the kind of player that we need. Uh, Alexander Stankovic comes in from Inter Milan. 20 years of age. Again, not capped by Serbia at any level. He's got a Serbia, dual Serbian and Italian nationality, which you love to see. Definitely much more of a defensive midfielder uh, with the high, higher tackling, passing, marking, etc. Hopefully, he can be another well-rounded addition for us. He came in on a free transfer from Inter Milan. Thank you very much. And then finally, we signed ourselves another goalkeeper, the former... Uh, partisan goalkeeper Alexander Popovic he looks very good um, and could probably compete for the Serbia goalkeeper job maybe he's got one cap for Serbia at the moment uh, and maybe he could get some more with regular football if I quick pick without restriction our best 11 guys this is how we are Popovic comes right in here and you can see the kind of depth that we do have throughout the course of the squad now so many high potential players in this team and then if we sort it by actual ability again we're quite top heavy uh, Svetkovic looking pretty darn good he is now wanted by League of Warsaw hopefully we can keep them off of his back again for this season and hopefully he has another good run if we go into the competitions tab we've won the league twice in a row we've won the cup twice in a row I want to maintain those in Serbia but I do want another good run at the Champions League however because the Serbian League has fallen in the coefficient as you can see we were in 14 we are now in 19th, probably largely down to my performance. It's been pretty poor in the Champions League and all the European competitions so far. We do have to qualify for the competition. We're back in the second qualifying round. We take on, I think it's still, Dam yeah, still Damien Duff's uh, side Shelbourne first and foremost. Uh, and hopefully we can get ourselves back into the Champions League. Because I feel like we could be a league phase team, but probably nothing beyond that at this point. Let's get the season done. Let's get into the re review. This season was a one of really high highs, but pretty low lows as well. First up, we were dumped out of the Serbian Cup in the first round after making it to the final in three of the previous seasons. We took on Metalak from the second tier, who scored three goals in the final few minutes of the game to take things to extra time. The game was ultimately then settled via penalties, where we had two players fail to convert their spot kicks, meaning we lost the game where we had 30 more shots than the opposition, along with 72% possession. But I guess that's just football. We started our league campaign with a nine game winning streak showcasing that we are still the best team in the country. This season we saw youngster Svetkovic really emerge and have his best season at the club netting a huge return of 34 goals in 44 appearances and he is now wanted by clubs in Saudi Arabia. After the winter break we were the best we've ever been in the league only dropping six points as we coasted through to a third successive Serbian league title. This time beating Red Star to it by seven points. 
So despite losing the cup after winning it for the last two seasons, winning the league three times in a row really does go to show that we are the best team in Serbia. But can we translate that onto the European stage? Did we qualify for the Champions League proper yet again? We had a difficult pass trying to get into the competition proper for a second season, but we actually made light work of the qualification, blasting our way past opposition from Ireland, Romania and Norway without even conceding a goal. Meaning that we went into the league phase for a second season in a row, but this year we actually came to play, managing to pick up key victories against Rennes, Slavia Prague, Werder Bremen, FC Copenhagen and Porto. Yeah, you heard that right. We won five of our eight games to finish 11th in the table level on points with Manchester City. That meant that we moved into the knockout phase of the competition for the first time ever, where we get drawn against Slavia Prague, a team that we beat in the league phase. The first leg of this one was on the road, but the home side started the stronger, taking the lead just before half-time. But we still proved difficult to put away as we got a lifeline with just seven minutes of the game remaining as we managed to pull level with a strike from the edge of the area. However, back in Serbia, we couldn't put the ball into the back of the net. We battered Slavia Prague but got hit with two goals against us, one early and one late to let this remarkable Champions League campaign come to an end. We are now consistently the best team in Serbia over the last three seasons, using a squad now exclusively of Serbian nationality players. The club now has multiple millions in the bank, 20 million pounds in transfer budget and a brand new stadium in the works. So now it's time to pass the save over to you. The files will be live on my Patreon right now. You can go and pick it up over on Patreon and continue this journey because I've done something like this in Serbia. It took me 11 years to win the Champions League and I want to see if you guys can actually get the job done quicker with this team. This was a fun one. If you want to see any more rebuilds from me, let me know the teams down in that uh, comment section. If you do like the rebuilds, check out this playlist. It's all the rebuilds that we've done on this year's game.